Hey guys, how's it going? Sorry here. Today I want to talk about Diablo. Diablo is a frontline bruiser brawler tank, and he can definitely be played as a single tank on your team. And he has gotten some significant changes recently. Before the, this patch, he was considered pretty much universally bad, and now he's the best tank in the game and the best pick competitively. That means first pick, first ban, pretty much universally. Um, and the big reason for that is he's just so tanky and he's so hard to kill and he really, really punishes you if you're out of position. So it used to be before this patch, he was pretty squishy. He charge and charge in and he would just die. But this patch, he is significantly, exponentially tankier and more difficult to kill. He also got a lot of other changes as well, which we'll cover. So first, before we go into his abilities or talents, let's go over the changes. So the changes, this patch, uh, just to his main abilities, are Shadow Charge does lower damage, but if you hit them into a target, if they collide with the target, then they do they take overall significantly more damage. Diablo also gains resistance after charging for two seconds, and that basically means he takes roughly 25% less damage um, overall after charging in. And that's obviously very effective because he just takes less damage, and that alone makes him tankier. The next change is to Fire Stomp. They decrease the base damage, but add the functionality where Fireball returns to do to do additional damage. So this change alone makes Fire Stomp do more damage overall, as long as both waves hit. And so this added functionality used to be a level 13 talent, and now it's just baseline. And I don't... I think the change is good, but they toned down the damage quite a bit, so his Fire Stomp feels pretty pissy. It doesn't really feel that effective. But it's a good change nonetheless. It means that you can take talents that, instead of increasing the functionality of this, you can just take talents that do something else. Black Soulstone, which is this passive, uh, they changed the max bonus per Soulstone stack from 0.2% to 0.4%. So this means that instead of gaining 20% max health at, at 100 stacks, you gain 40% max health. So again, another uh, health increase and another tanky increase. So these are the three changes to his abilities. We'll cover the rest of the talent changes uh, in the client. So before we go over talents, let's just go over his abilities really quick. So his Q ability is Shadow Charge. And when you charge in, you gain resistance, you do damage. And if the target collides with terrain, then they're stunned for one second. So this is, that's basically the entire ability there. Now, let's try and collide this into some terrain. So let's push it up. And you can see that the start target is stunned a little bit longer. His other, his next ability is Fire Stomp, and basically a 6 second cooldown, and around him flames come out that do damage on their way there and their way back. They do a little bit more damage on their way back. His E is Overpower, and basically just flips the target, and stuns them for a tiny amount of time. So, this, keep in mind, does actually stun heroes. Uh, Shadow Charge does not stun unless they collide with the wall. Uh, so, if you, so you can use Overpower to interrupt um, things like Strafe, where you, where Shadow Charge won't interrupt that because it doesn't stun unless they hit a target. So you want to use Shadow Charge and Overpower uh, together. So you can use them in two ways. You can use it to in, either initiate, and this is usually how you initiate. In QE, so that's an aggressive initiation. Or, if they're near you, you can EQ. And that's for more defensive counter-engage style. The interesting thing here is that you can also, you can Shadow Charge over walls. I don't think the Shadow Charge is long enough here to be able to do it on this wall. But you can Shadow Charge if you have a target and you can get someone over the wall. You can also overpower heroes over the wall. So if there's a if there's any sieging at a gate or something, you can flip them over this gate into your structures. And so basically what it means is you can't push, you have to be very, very careful if you don't have any kind of mobility when you're pushing into Diablo because he'll flip you and get a really, really easy kill. Because you'll be stuck behind the gate and you won't be able to get out. And he'll charge you in, of course. These abilities have the same cooldown, Shadow Charge and Overpower, so they should always be on cooldown together, ideally. Uh, you don't always have to use them together, so say this is a hero right here and they're near a wall, you can just queue in, you can body block, and then when they try and get out, then you can flip them back in or something. So you don't always have to use them together. Diablo's passive is Black Soulstone, and you gain 10 souls per hero kill and 1 soul per minion kill, up to 100. So for every soul that you stack, you gain 0.4% max health, and once you have 100 souls, you automatically resurrect after in, in 5 seconds when you die, but you lose all of your souls. So what this means is that you gain 100, you gain 40% max health once you have um, 100 stacks, and you can resurrect, which is really, really powerful. However, you don't always want to resurrect. Losing your, your souls, now that Diablo has 
there's two reasons. One of the reasons is the max health, and another reason is due to talents. But you really, really, really don't want to lose your your souls. Uh, losing your souls makes you significantly weaker. And Diablo right now is in a position where he's a win harder hero. So if you're winning, you're gonna win really hard. And if, but if you die in a fight, you're gonna be significantly weaker until you stack those stones again. Of course, if you're in a big fight and you know you go three for three or four for four something late game and you revive, the revive is gonna be much better than if you had just not lost your stacks in the first place. So the revive is really key, but you really want to make sure you're not using your stacks and just dying. You can't don't have the mindset when playing Diablo. Well, oh, I died. Doesn't matter. I'll just revive. You really, it's really important to keep these stacks alive. You're like 50%. 60% tankier um, with talents than you would be with otherwise. So make sure that you actually do keep these soul stones alive. So early game, you just want to roam around the map and you want to make sure that you're collecting all of these souls uh, by wave clearing and ganking and getting kills. Um, and you want to do as much as you can so you can stack this. You should stack this you know, fairly early in the game, maybe level seven or something. It's not hard to stack. Just want to make sure you don't die with it. But you really want to make sure if you're playing Diablo that you do look for these stones. Uh, okay, let's move on to talents. So, at level 1, we have Bulwark, which increases the duration of Resistant from 2 to 5 seconds. Devil's Dew, which increases the effectiveness of Regen Globes um, by 2% per soul, which is 200% when fully stacked. And Life Leech, which is basically a 1% giant killer that also heals you for the damage. So, every time you auto-attack, you deal 1% of their max health, and you get healed for that. Okay, so Bulwark is by far the talent you should choose most of the time. And if you're in competitive, especially, or in coordinated games, Bulwark is really good. Like it's increasing the duration from two to five seconds um, is huge. It basically covers most of the fight, especially in engaged. So for two seconds, you can go in, you might get stunned, and then resistance is worn off. But Bulwark is going to make it last very long. So you basically significantly increase your tankiness in fights. Now Devils do. I've never seen anyone take it, but I actually think it's really good. Okay, so when you're fully stacked, this is going to give you 200%. The healing fountains part is is pretty much trash, like 99% of the time. But the regen glow part. 200%, that sounds like a joke. Oh, you get increased regen globe healing. Remember that regen globes heal you for 12% of your max health. And when you're Diablo and you have like like 40% more of this, you know, you have like over 7,000 health. And you pick up a regen globe that's going to heal you for 36% uh, of your max health per regen globe. If you pick up two regen globes, that's 72% of your max health. If you pick up three, you're fully healed. Like that's really, really good, especially in quick match or hero league. Uh, where you don't even need Bulwark, really, because the engages are really sloppy, um, and people aren't even targeting you. Uh, if you can just pick up two globes in a fight, then you literally almost fully heal yourself. Like It's it's really, really strong. This can be a really effective talent um, that I think is really underrated right now. Life Leech seemed really good at the start, but Diablo's attack speed is like less than one per second. So, you know, you compare Giant Killer to someone on like Vala, or you compare it on to someone like Falstad, um, who have much faster attack speeds. Diablo has a very slow attack speed. Um, and you compare this to, this is basically a really shitty Spectral Leech that Lyric has at level 20. So even though Lyric has a really slow attack speed, Spectral Leech is still really good because it does 5% per hit, per hit and this only does 1%. So um, I think you're much better off getting either of these two talents. Uh, at level 4, so Diablo actually has really viable talents at pretty much every tier. Uh, Blizzard, again, did a pretty good job here. So from the Shadows, increases the range of Shadow Charge. So not the distance that they're knocked, but just the range that you can use it. So you can see here that this is the normal range, and if I get this talent, this is the normal range. Um, so 33% increase, and uh, target to stun for an additional 0.5 seconds. So now you're getting a 1.5 second stun if you're hitting them into a wall. So let's just see the stun here. So 1.5 seconds, that's pretty long. And the range is also pretty long, so you can combo pretty far away. So um, that's pretty good. Speed Demons, being stunned or rooted, increased Diablo's movement speed by 30% 30 30 for 5 seconds. Um, and Demonic Strength, which is um, after you overpower, the target is slowed for 30% for 3 seconds. So actually all 3 options are pretty good. Generally you're going to go uh, from the shadows, but I've been trying Demonic Strength recently, and I actually really like it if your team doesn't have any CC. Um, so a lot of the times the range on Shadow Charge isn't actually good, because you dive, the range is so far. Remember that you, you not only, the range isn't just this, like, Look at the max range here, and then look when you charge how far you actually go. So look where Diablo is before I charge, and look how far you go, like you, like across the map. Okay, you don't want to be that far away from your team. So if you're if you're really going in, you know this far away to flip, you're probably just gonna die. Honestly, that's way too far. Um, I I still think this is generally the better talent, but if your team 
but it's something to keep in mind and you're not losing too much by giving it up um the extra 0. 0.5 second, 0. 0.5 seconds done is a big part of it um, okay so demonic strength if your team has no cc it the slow is actually pretty good 30 percent for three, three seconds that isn't decaying three seconds is pretty long for a slow so it's it's pretty good um i actually like, like this quite a lot Speed Demon, increase your movement speed by 30% for 5 seconds. This 5 seconds is, is a very long duration for a movement speed buff. But at the end of the day, I'd rather just have the slow for your target rather than the speed for yourself. And this is conditional. Um, obviously, if they have a lot of stuns or roots, it's going to be good. But I could see this being good versus like a, a Johanna or something who's going to auto-stun you with her Condemn. And you automatically get 30% movement speed for 5 seconds. But most of the time, we're going to go the other option. So I would generally go from the Shadows, Speed Demon, maybe if they have a ton in CC, and oh, Demonic Strength, your team has no CC. At level 7, we again have some pretty good options. Um, so Soul Feast increases your Devil's Regen by 0.4 per second, which equates to 40 health per second when you're fully stacked. Soul Shield reduces the ability damage taken by 35% or 0.35% and 35% when you're fully stacked, and Diablo Momentum, which reduces the cooldown of Overpower and Shadow Charge by 1.5 seconds per auto attack. So Soul Feast is bad. You don't need the regen. The other ones are just way much, much better. I guess I wouldn't say it's bad, but for level 7 talent, regen is, you know, kind of pushing it. And Soul Shield is one of the best talents in the entire game. It basically gives you a 35% damage reduction on ability on ability damage um, permanently on a tank. That's insanely strong. That's really, really, really powerful. And you basically take 35% less damage, especially you know in some games where maybe maybe even at lower levels as well, where people don't auto auto you as much. So a lot of the damage you're taking is just ability damage. You're going to reduce a significant amount of damage. And sometimes with an enemy team, it's just all ability damage. You're just going to reduce the damage you take by 35%. So it's basically giving you it's it. Remember reducing damage that you take is better than having 35% more max health because you can always be healed for your health but taking a nullifier of 35% is way better than just having that additional health so now so far let's keep check for Diablo this patch compared to last patch he has resistance to level 1 that can last for up, up to 5 seconds 25% damage resistance he has an additional 20% max health and he takes 35% less ability damage so that's a lot of tankiness and we're not done yet there's still more to come uh, and then there's Diablo Momentum, which uses the cooldown of Overpower and Shadow Charge to 1.5 se seconds. It's actually a huge, huge amount. So it doesn't affect Fire Stomp, right? But you're not going to get insane damage. But just look how, look at the cooldown reduction. Auto attack. Wait, did I not click it? I didn't click it. Okay, let's try that. Let's try that again. Let's try that again, guys. So you're in a fight. You're body blocking, and it's already back up. Then you can come. So that's actually quite a lot, and especially when you get uh, a talent later in the game. So what do I recommend here? Definitely Soul Shield most of the time, but I think Diablo Momentum, if they don't have, um, if they don't have a lot of ability damage, you definitely want to go with Diablo Momentum here. At level 10, there's Ap Apocalypse and Lightning Breath. Apocalypse um, creates a demonic rune under each enemy here on the battleground, and after 1.5 seconds, it's it damage it does damage and it stuns for 1.5 seconds. So this spawns under it's global and it spawns under every hero in the game. So if they have Vikings, it spawns under every Viking, etc. Um, okay, so basically Apoc. Okay, and yeah, that's basically Apoc. So there's a few ways you can you can you can combo this, and this is basically a combo ability. You don't just use it. So if you're going to the fight, the thing I hate seeing experienced Diablos do is they just go into the fight, they just pop Apoc, and they just attack in there, and Apoc like hits like one person because the enemy team obviously just dodges it. So you want to combo it. So you want to combo it with Jaina's Ring of Frost, Jaina any kind of slows, Earthquake on on Thrall. You want to combo it with Zeratul's Void Prison. Uh, you want to combo with Melf Roots, you want to combo with any kind of CC on your team, any kind of AoE, Graviton on Zarya, I don't think you should get it, but um, any kind of combo, you want to combo it. Now, if you don't have combo on your team, you can also just do this. You can auto combo. So all you got to do here, all you got to do is you just pop Apoc and then you just combo. That's it. So you just R, Q, E, and they're going to get stunned. There's a little bit of time in between here where they can dodge it. So... If they have, say, say it's like Lee Ming or something that has a blink, you'll pop Apoc and then go in. And they'll get, okay, well, not that one. But you'll, you'll hold it a little bit, and you'll combo, and they'll get stunned the second they land. Okay, so that's Apocalypse, and when should you take it? Uh, I think you should take it when 
your t when you have double tank, or sorry, you have single tank, your single tank Diablo, and you have a lot of burst damage, a lot of CC, a lot of combo potential. So I wouldn't take this if you're if you're in double tank, unless your double tank is like a Muradin and you're just gonna CC a lot of people. Um, I would take Apocalypse if you're solo tanking, just as a general rule. N don't always follow this, but as a general rule, I take Apoc when I'm solo tanking. The other heroic Choose you have talent. available is... Lightning Breath. And Lightning Breath is really strong as well. So Lightning Breath is a 60 second cooldown versus 100 second cooldown. And it basically, you can channel it and you can move your direction and it does this huge flame fire thing that does a ton of AoE damage over a target. And um, possibly more importantly, you're also unstoppable while this is being cast. So this means that you are immune to any kind of CC, Ring of Frost, you're immune to uh, Polymorph, you're immune to stuns, roots, uh, although that wouldn't matter. Any any kind of CC you're completely immune to. Um, however, you're not immune to uh, Medivh's Leyline, you're not immune to Zeratul's Void Prison, and you're not immune to um, Zagara's Maw. So if you're Maw, you'll get eaten up like that. Um, so this is going to do a ton of damage, and you basically just want to proc it in the middle of the fight. And the reason I say you want to use this with double tank is if you're solo tank, you're just going to die. So you need someone else to dive in with you, otherwise you're just going to be focused in. So you want to make sure that you, you go in, and you, you can combo or something, you're in the middle of the fight, and then you flame breath. You can also use it if to counter engage. Um, so the enemy team goes on, another tank or another ally on your team, you can, and you ha don't have combo up, you can just flame breath them, and you can peel just with the amount of damage it does. So it does um, almost 2,000 damage at level at level 20, over 4 seconds of course, but it's AoE damage and it's pretty big, the, the cone. So this is a very, very good tool. If you're in double tank, generally I go lightning breath, soul tank, apocalypse. Level 13, I'll admit these talents kind of suck. I don't really like them. The Devastating Charge potentially is really, really strong. And if you're on a map that has a lot of walls, I suggest this. So when you charge a target and they hit a wall, so the Shadow Charge, you hit them into a wall, um, they take 5% of their... Okay, so if, they, if you just Shadow Charge in general, they take... No, when you Shadow Charge into a wall, sorry, they take an additional 5% damage. And then if you do it five times, they take... So every time you do it, they, get an they take an additional 2% max damage. So not only do you have to combo it, but once it's stacked, it's going to do... Um, it's going to do 15% of the target's max health on a pretty low cooldown. And especially with Diablo Momentum, you're going to have that on a very low cooldown. The only problem is it's... You know, it's not reliable, right? So you're not always hitting targets into the wall. If you were always hitting targets into the wall, this would be an amazing talent. But that's not something that you can always do. Sometimes you'll get the situation where you just get a ton of value out of this, but most of the time, I don't think you will. Uh, Hellfire, each time you damage an enemy here with Fire Stomp, increase the damage to the next Fire Stomp by 10%. So this includes um, the damage going out and the damage going in. So obviously, Fire Stomp can only hit a hero once when it goes out and once when it comes in. So that's why it's it's 10%. Um, so 100 divided by 100% divided by 10%, you're gonna hit, it's gonna hit 10 times, right? You can stack it up to 10 times. So that means you can hit up to five heroes twice, right? So um, if you're hitting like three or four heroes, you increase the damage by you know around like 50, 60% or something. And it's just it does so little damage, it's just not worth it in my opinion. The other option here that I suggest you take is Fire Devil. So this increases your auto attack damage by 25%, and he does have fairly high auto attack damage, 230. Um, this is actually show 288 then when you, when you take it at uh, level 20. And it does a bit of AoE damage per second. And the important part of this is that, yes, the damage per second isn't that much, but it lasts for 6 seconds. So you basically have 100% uptime. Oh, not like that. Um, you have 100% uptime on the Fire Devil damage AoE. So you basically have a, um, it's kind of a mix between uh, Burning Rage and just 25% more damage. So this is basically Burning Rage for the most part. Uh, at level 16, we have some more interesting talents. The Pillaging Flame, uh, enemy heroes hit by Fire Stomp are slowed by 15% up to 30%. So this means that on the way out, they can be hit. and the way back, they can be hit. Um, that can slow them for up to 30%. And that's pretty good slow. And it's a pretty easy to hit people, so it's a pretty effective slow. Uh, domination reduces the cooldown of Overpower by 4 seconds. And Casting Overpower resets the cooldown of Shadow Charge. So this is a very interesting talent. So when you combo... Uh, let's take cooldowns off. So cooldowns, cooldown resets are off here. So if I combo in with this talent, I could do this, which is really interesting, right? Um, you can combo back into your team. So let's let's see that again. You can combo, you can combo back into your team. So that can be useful. Um, and when you have Diablo like, momentum, let's reset talents here so I can get it. Okay. Um, so when we have this talent. 
when I charge, I'm going to take cooldowns off, right? So look at the cooldown. Look how much cooldown reduction we have. So your auto attack, auto attack, and this is back up, and I'm comboing, and and then it's already going to be back up, and you can combo. So you have insane, of course this is a ton of mana, but you have, you can use this your abilities very, very often. Um, I actually really like this. If you, if honestly, the biggest reason I don't like that talent is just because of Diablo's mana cost. Like you run out of mana really quickly in a team fight. Um, like you could combo probably like a few times in a, in a fight, but like if you have any kind of skirmishes, you're gonna run out of mana so quickly. That's the number one reason I don't like that option, um, or why I don't take it more often. Fearful presence is what you should be taking. So. It's basically imposing presence in the fact that Heroes and Summons attack Diablo have their attack speed slowed by 20% per 2.5 seconds, but the active is different. It's unique to Diablo, and Heroes near you take 30% reduced damage, or they deal 30% reduced damage for 3 seconds, and that's actually really, really good. And it's only a 20 second cooldown, so not only are they attacking you a lot slower, 20%, but they also do 30% less damage. So that makes it, 30% less damage is a lot better than 30% slower attack speed right because um, it affects mages who don't rely on attack speed so this is this is the option you're going to take at level 16 so remember now you have um what's it called you have uh, soul shield at level 7 you have resistance you have health increase and you have fearful presence all right now we're at level 20 here um and the options here are dying breath which is epoch school demo 20 seconds and it's cast for free when diablo dies that's shit uh hellstorm Lightning breath lasts last and reaches 50% longer. This is really good, and um, you should. This is definitely a viable option if you're going lightning breath. I actually take it most of the games. I do go lightning breath. Lord of Terror activate to steal 10% max health from nearby enemies. Um, it's not bad, but as we see at Hellgate, Hellgate is basically bolt. But when you teleport, you also spawn an apocalypse rune on your feet. So it's literally spawns an apoc on your feet um, with bolt. So this is insane. This is one of the best talents in the game, and it's really crazy. So basically, when you bolt here, you apoc. So what you can do here, if you want to combo, you can apoc combo with lightning breath, and you can bolt, and it's pretty much impossible to avoid. So you're gonna stun someone, and uh, I don't think I actually hit them there. But so you wanna you wanna make sure that you're casting it about. Um, about right here, and it's gonna send them. So, Hellgate is pretty good, and it not only do you, you can use it defensively, but you can also use it defensively um, to obviously just bolt out of the fight if you need to. So let's look at the Hellstorm really quick. Blah blah blah. So Hellstorm upgrade it makes you attack much further, and it lasts for a very very long time. So this is going to be very impactful in fights. The, the enemy team cannot fight under that or they will lose 100%. So this makes it hit the, those range heroes that are really far away. And it zones the enemy, the entire enemy team basically. So having, uh, you know, it lasts 6 seconds now. The range is it's a really, really strong option. Um, okay, the last thing I want to show you guys is um, if you go Apocalypse with... Uh, Hellgate, because you can definitely combo these abilities. So you can, there's two ways you can use it. You can either Hellgate in and APOC, um, or then APOC after. So I haven't gotten this combo perfectly down yet, so I might mess it up. Oh, I messed it up. Okay, let me let me let me try this again. All right, so you can basically perma stun. So all you gotta do here is you bolt onto the target, and then as soon as you flip them, you APOC, and that's the entire combo. Um, the other one you can do is you can APOC first and then you bolt directly on top of them to stun them as well. So that's the better option um, because it, it's a lot, it's just easier to do and you don't have to use your bolts in the first place. So you can use the Hellgate if it looks like you won't get the kill. Um, but you want to start off the combo, you can start off the combo with APOC or Hellgate. Hellgate's going to give you a longer range obviously um, and you can do it over walls where you don't have vision. Um, but the APOC one is a little bit easier to land. So those are the two options. There's, I don't, I, I would usually start with Apocalypse if you can, and Hellgate if you if you can't. Um, but that's pretty much everything about Diablo that I wanted to talk about. 
So he's a really good hero overall. You should always pick him if he's available as a tank. He's good on any map. He's good on. He's good with any comp. It doesn't matter if you don't have a dive comp. He's still really good at peeling. He's still just a really solid tank overall. And a lot of games I've played Diablo, I have the highest damage in the game. At least with Lightning Breath. Even if I'm playing in competitive, I've had highest damage with Diablo. He just does that much damage. Uh, so he, if you're having Diablo on your team, he just he's gonna get nerfed. I I would. He's 100% going to get nerfed. I think he's the strongest tank in the game um, by quite a large margin. And if you can get, find some kind of really good synergy in Hero League, you're going to have a total blast with them. And if you play with your friends in Quick Match or Team League or something, then co try comboing with a Tyrande, try comboing with a Malfurion, um, try comboing with a KT. Any kind of hero that has CC. Jaina has another good option. Makes it really good setting up for APOC. And they can't run out of the slow with Lightning Breath. Uh, so give that a shot. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll talk to you next time.